God about our future. There is nothing that he prophesied that did not happen. God used him mightily to this ministry, even into our lives and even as a family. He is not a guest, but he is a brother. And I want us to welcome him. This is a man that God now has opened the world for him. You know, during the World Cup, he called me and he said he's going to preach in a stadium in, what is this country that is so famous now? What is it? That everyone wants to go. Not Tanzania, that's... Huh? Qatar. Yeah, he was preaching there and he just came from Whitbank. He had a wonderful crusade. Many, many souls gave their life to Christ. You know, before that he had uh, one in, in Limpopo. Vegas Fort, God did great things. He's opened doors in Tanzania, in Kenya, in, in, the, in the continent of Africa. God is using him. So, beloved, I would like us to welcome this servant of God that God is using, and yet he's still very humble. He's still even willing to come to minister to us. God is using him mightily, mightily. Yes. You know, in Nigeria, in all the areas of the of the of where you know God is moving, He's moving with those guys. Let's welcome Bishop Prophet Tabo Masinya. As we stand, as we stand like that, I'm going to ask you. There are two reasons why I am here today. Okay, let alone the ordination is, I would say, the third reason. But there are two reasons. One is to preach. Another one, the Lord said to me. There is a birth and a death and a resurrection of everything. And the Lord spoke to me that this day is the day that we're not preaching resurrection, but it's the day of the resurrection of Rock of Salvation. And this day, that's when we have the ordination which is the first as a rock of salvation. And this day, all that God revealed to rock of salvation, it's starting today. And on this day, the encounters he showed his servant, he's connecting him back to those encounters. And the Lord had to take him through the process of where he was, where the encounter couldn't be allowed, to where he is, where the encounter will manifest. We are entering a new birth of the church, a new move of Rock of Salvation. And the Lord said to me, before I start preaching, I must say, I introduce to you the new apostle Tebu Homolauti that will operate in a grace you have never seen before. God is reconnecting him to the grace that you have never seen before. As I prayed last night, the Lord said to me, the miracles his father saw are smaller than the miracles he will see in his life. The anointing and the grace that rested upon his father is going to manifest upon his life. And he will see supernatural miracles he has never experienced. And the nation will rise up to see what God has bestowed upon his life. So today I release a new beginning. 
a new chapter and a new move of God upon this church, upon your life and upon all the pastors ordained today. There's a new wave that is going to rest upon you and we prophesy, we blow a trumpet and say, it's a release of rock of salvation to fulfill the mandate God laid upon his servant in Jesus mighty name. And Father, I ask you, fulfill your word. Right now, I'm going to ask you and I that we kneel down together. Father, we can't without you. We can't without you. We are not big. We are not great. We are ordinary people. But you chose us. You chose us. You anointed us. You gave us a commission, Lord. Father, tears fall from my eyes now. Because I know what you're about to do. I know what you're about to reveal. I know the new chapter you're bringing. We come before you and humble ourselves before your throne. We say, God, when you do what you want to do, keep us humble. When you reveal what you are going to reveal, keep us humble. When you build the buildings you want to build, keep us humble. When you draw people to come and fellowship, keep us humble. When you perform the miracles you will perform, keep us humble. Remind us we are ordinary. And you are a great God. Let all the praise, the glory and the honor belong to you and to you alone. We share glory with not you God. We will not share it with you. We will still lift you up. We will still exalt you. We will still glorify you. We will say it is God who did it. We will still say we can't. But you made it, oh God. This day, write it in heavens as a new chapter for this ministry. Write it in the heavens as a new manifestation of your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Can we thank the Lord when we worship him? Can we glorify him? We glorify you, Lord. We glorify you. Glorify Jehovah right where you are. Lift him up. Worship him. Declare him Christ King, Lord and ruler of. cannot do be God over this church be God over this mission be God over this new chapter be God over this new revelation we give him the glory we give you the glory and the honor we lift up your holy name oh God heaven and earth agree today to release the mandate you've set apart for us oh God we thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. We lift up your holy name above every other name. We glorify you, King of kings and Lord of lords. 
for that which men cannot do you are able to do that which men cannot even think about you are able to fulfill we give you the glory and the honor we say hallelujah belongs unto thee and unto thee alone we worship you jehovah who reigns thank you oh god thank you you preserved us when the enemy thought he got us you preserved us when the enemy thought it is over with us you preserved us we give you the glory we lift up your name hallelujah, hallelujah. somebody shout unto jesus glorify the name of the king of kings and the lord of lords glorify jehovah who reigns forever lift up his holy name he is the christ king eternal invisible and the only god we give glory and honor to him forever and ever we worship you shout with a sound of triumph hallelujah we worship him we worship him we worship him we lift up his name above every other name join the heavens lift up your voice shout at the top of your voice declare christ as king lord and ruler of all lift up his holy name hallelujah jesus 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 it's an encounter day we will never walk out of this place the way we came in a different chapter about your life is written right now in the name of jesus a new chapter is written about your life in the name of jesus hallelujah 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 a new chapter is written about your life you are not the same man who came in here you are a person of a new chapter in jesus name hallelujah thank you lord may have our seats god bless you god bless you god bless you you may have your seats god bless you Oh, I give God the glory and the honor for this day. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, God is so good. I want to thank God for the apostle and his wife for keeping their hearts focused to the call of God upon their life. It's not an easy thing to stay focused keeping their hearts focused to the call of God upon their life. And for every support they've given to us throughout our mission, like he said, we just came back from a crusade which ended last week Sunday in Whitbank for five days. And we saw the hand of God. We went through difficult battles when the crusade started. On Wednesday, we had heavy battles that... Um, it was like the crusade will not happen. When everything was there, we were confronted. You know, South Africa has too many things that we have to be careful and work hard that they don't divert us as a nation. You know, when we had placed everything, put up the tent and everything, we're ready to start the crusade. And we had political parties coming to us to stop us from continuing with the crusade. Not because they don't want us to preach, but because they were asking why you do such a big crusade. You bring so many tents in the ground because an open crusade. You bring toilets, VIP toilets. You bring all these things, water and everything, here, yeah, stages and sound, and we don't get a tender. Why didn't you give this as tenders to us? That was the fight. That these toilets, why are they not tenders? 
these stages, why are they not tenders? The sound and everything, why are they not tenders? Why do you come with everything from Pretoria? How are, how, how are local businesses supposed to eat? That was the main fight. And I was looking at it, I said, if we don't do something about this situation in our country, this is going to get us into trouble. Where I can't do anything unless someone eats. I never thought it could even go to the purpose, place of the gospel. <laughs> that you can bring the gospel and come with everything. Give us something to eat. As there was an argument, they said, okay, fine. You have everything. You have the stage, you have the lights, you have the sounds, you have everything. Give us security as a tender. That the spirit of tender is too much in our heads. We argued, we didn't want to give them a tender. And they said, well, if you don't give us a tender, we know the criminals of this place. We will call them. They said, you have a very big generator here. <laughs> you, you have a tower light that can light up two hectares. You have stages, you have everything. We know the criminals that can come and clean this place. Unless you give us a tender. I couldn't preach on the first day of the crusade. We had to let one of the evangelists preach. But the Lord stood through for us. Managed to come through for us. On Thursday, the crusade came back to its position and God manifested his power. Hundreds upon hundreds of people were getting saved daily. Coming to Jesus in large numbers. Many healings, many miracles took place. We just saw the hand of God until the last day on Sunday when God took over the place with his presence. And one of the things I want to tell you when I was in Whitbank, the place where I've put our crusade is at the entrance, the gate of Whitbank. The Lord spoke to us, do the crusade at the entrance, the gate of Whitbank. We did a crusade there. While I was there preaching, the Lord gave me a word and said to me, the place where you've put up the crusade is an altar for Whitbank. And the Lord said to me, because you came here, he said to me, the creature, that's what he said, that lives here is going to leave this place. He said the creature will leave and when it leaves, there's going to be a big storm and a strong wind in Whitbank and it will happen around midnight. So I announced it to the people. I said, this is going to happen. It was on Saturday. Sunday, we did a crusade. The crusade went very well. We were done. Monday, we removed everything. Monday, midnight going to Tuesday. A huge storm came. Shut off the lights. It was dark. A big wind came. They had to close the road. The offering that takes people into the township. It was closed because huge storm was there. Trees were just falling apart. It was a big storm. And people were just scared in their houses when they saw such a huge storm. And it was moving right where the crusade was. And the storm continued for a very long time. And after a very long time, a huge rain came. Videos were taken. They sent me videos of what was happening. And after that huge storm, a gentle breeze and peace came upon Whitbank. And pastors called me. And said, whatever that was at the entrance of our city has been moved because you put up a crusade there. The hand of God came, took, removed whatever that was planted at the entrance of the city. I'm sharing this with you to tell you that there is nothing that the devil can plant in your life or your family that God cannot remove. Today I declare into your life that whatever the enemy has inserted in your life or your family, God this day is coming with power to uproot the plantations of the kingdom of darkness upon your life. Can you shout amen? amen. The power 
of God is enough to uproot anything that the devil has started upon your life. This is one thing that the Lord said I should ask before we go further into preaching. There are people who know everything around this place, but there are people who don't know. Please, I want everybody, everybody to be familiar with where the toilets are right now before I start preaching. Because the Lord told me a lot of people are going to vomit things that the enemy did upon your life. Some of them you will just rush to the bathroom to help yourself because a certain power of deliverance will remove systems. Things that have been planted in your life will live your life as we are in the service. Please, if you feel nausea, you feel something moving inside of you, don't stay in the church. We don't want to mess up the church. Don't stay in the church. Rush to the bathroom immediately and let God deliver you. If you feel you have a running stomach, don't wait. Rush to the bathroom immediately. Let God deliver you. That's what the Lord told me. Everybody must, if you feel any uneasiness, rush to the bathroom. Let God deliver you. Because this day, God wants to bring something new in your life. We are in the resurrection. The beginning of things. God is setting things afresh and doing something we are not used to. Let's read the book of Exodus chapter 12, verse 9 to 12. Somebody read it for us in a vernacular and somebody read it for us in English. Exodus chapter 12, verse 9 to verse 12. Exodus chapter 12. I want it with a vernacular language any vernacular language yes. and one in English. In Sisoto, it reads thus. Listen, Kela Ija is a good one. Listen, Kela Ija is a Impe ibe swamu long. Shoho le mautu lidi katenen sayona. Verse 10. Lisi ke la itia la lito. La yo na husasani. Mi ho ka salang. Ha yo na husasani. Li hu chise mulung. Continue. Li ke li je. Ka mu kwa ona. Li it amila mateka. Le rwetsi di eta tsa lona mautong a lona. Le tshwere le re la lona matsohong a lona. Le je le potlaka le potlaka. Ke paseka ya Jehova. Thank you Jesus. Can we have it in English? Somebody can read it in English. Thank you, Lord. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over a fire with the head, legs, and internal organs. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your stuff in your hand. Eat it. Eat it in haste. Mm -hmm. Eat it the Lord's Supper. It is the Lord's Supper. Amen. Father, bless the reading of your word. Manifest your hand. Touch your people. Speak in a way that only you can. Manifest in a way that only you can. Touch people. Move in the midst of people. At the end of the service, let the people say, God spoke, God touched us. And let all the praise, the glory, and the honor be given to thee and unto thee alone. Amen. Now I want you to look at the Passover. We are celebrating the Passover. And the Bible says, when it talks about the Passover, it says, in the Passover, 
the people had to follow a certain system of how to eat the sacrificial lamb. Now, it's important for you to understand this. That the Passover in the Old Testament was a symbol of the Passover in the New Testament of which talks about Christ. But also it was a prophecy of who we are as a church living in the Passover. Now, in the Old Testament, the Bible says, this is how you should eat the Passover lamp. It says, first in verse 1 to verse 8, it says, the lamp must be without blemish. That's the first thing. The lamp must be without blemish. And that is the lamp that will be sacrificed. The lamp must be without blemish. And that is the lamp that will be sacrificed. Now, hear this very well. The only lamp that can be sacrificed to be used by God must be a blameless lamp. Not a lamp with fault, a blameless lamp. It's the one that must be sacrificed. It must not be blind, it must not be crippled, it must not have any blemish. It must be perfect, healthy. And that lamp, it's a sacrificial lamp. Why am I raising this to you? God will allow people without blemish to be sacrificed. It is the people without blemish who go through sacrifice in the kingdom of God. Don't look at people who go through sacrifice and say, but why are they going through so much? The lamp that God uses for Passover, it's a lamp without blemish. The people God uses for Passover are people that are spotless. And those people, before they can be used for Passover to demonstrate God's power, they go through sacrifice. People that you look at them and say there's nothing wrong with them, yet sacrifice falls on them. Because it is the people that are blameless that are sacrificed. It's not the people who already have problems. It is people who are blameless that go through sacrifice in order for God to do Passover through their life. So when you believe you are blameless, you are the candidate that will go through sacrifice. When you believe you are living right, blameless, holy, perfect, you are the person that people will talk about. You are the person people will gossip about. You are the person people will criticize. You are the person people will put his name on the mat because you are perfect. Most of you are expecting, why, why that, one? that one? I mean, that one, if they talk about him, it will justify. Why do they leave him? No, no, no. Sacrifice happens to lambs that are blam blameless. Sacrifice happens to lambs that are blameless. It is the blameless saints that are the most criticized. It is the blameless pastors that a lot of scandals will rise about. It is the blameless churches that a lot of friction will go through. Sacrifice happens to the blameless lambs. That's the first thing you must understand. So the Bible says after they have chosen a blameless lamb, they have to sacrifice it. And the Bible is specific. Understand, every time the Bible is specific, there is a big reason why the Bible is specific. Every time the Bible is specific, there is a big reason why the Bible is specific. There's a reason why when Moses, when David was fighting Goliath, he, the Bible was specific to say he used five stones. There's a reason why the Bible says the stones were smooth. There's a reason why the Bible says he had to get the stones from the river. Those things are not just sayings. The Bible is trying to communicate something to you when it's specific on anything. That's why the Bible did not say Mary the mother of Jesus was a woman. No, 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 no. It was clear to say it was a virgin. There was a reason that it had to specify virginity. The Bible never emphasized anything if it has no reason. Once there's an emphasis... There's a reason behind the emphasis. So as a child of God, when you study the Bible, every emphasis, try to find out why this emphasis. 
What is behind this emphasis? So the Bible explains that when you eat the sacrificial lamp for Passover, this is how you do it. It says do not eat it and boil it with water. It says don't eat it while it has blood. It says roast it and kill the blood in it. It's important. And it specifies, it says, when you eat the Passover lamp, make sure it is enough for a family to finish. If it's too much, two families must come together to finish it. And it says again, when you eat it, make sure that if you don't finish it, don't leave the leftovers. Make sure that whatever is left is burned. And he said, when you do it, when you eat it, eat it knowing that Passover comes in haste. It's fast. So when you eat it, make sure that you have your hand on your weapon while the other hand is eating. That is specific. Have one hand on your weapon while the other hand is eating and be ready for the Passover. This is the Passover of the Lord. Passover, when it happens upon people, people must have two hands and two abilities. The devil has made the church to focus on one thing. Most of the churches, most of the Christians, they excel in one, not in both. Passover comes upon people who, can, who know the excellence of both, not one. We have saints who have the hand on the food, but no hand on the weapon. We have saints who have the hand on the weapon, but no hand on the food. That's not what God requires. The people of the end times are people who have both hands functioning. One hand on the food, one hand on the weapon. That is the church of resurrection. That is the church of the Passover. That has both hands. When Gideon was going to set Israel free, the Bible says he came with 32,000 soldiers to fight. And when he came with 32,000 soldiers, God said, no, 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 no. There are too many. He said, tell those who are afraid to go home. Why did God do that? Because God knew if there were 32,000 and they go to war and they win, they will say, we did it. So he did not want that. He wanted them to realize they are too few to win. So if they ever win, it is God. Some of you in here, God has been trying to get rid of your many soldiers in your life. So that you can know that whatever he's doing, it is him, it's not the people. And because you don't understand, the people God is removing, you are busy pulling them back. The people God is cutting away, you are busy reconnecting with them. God wants to get rid of them so that when you achieve, you will say, God, this is not the work of man. This is you. That's why you had to get rid of these people. There were 32,000 ready for war. God said, let those who are afraid go back. And 22,000 men left. 10,000 remained. They said, we are ready to fight. God said, there are still too many. They will have something to say if they win. They will talk. They say, we're 10,000. 10, he said, take them to the river. When you get to the river, follow this law. Let those who drink they are having weapons, but they are drinking with their faces inside the river. Those ones, you can't go with them. Leave them. Because they are one-sided men. When it's time for war, they are ready for war. But when it's time for food, they forget the war. They put their face in the water and have the food. He said, the end time army, it's not that type of an army. He said, look for those who will not put their knees on the ground and their face in the water. Those who will squat are the ones I want. And when they squat, they will put one hand in the river to drink. But they will have one hand on the weapon ready for war. They are using both hands. One to, re to drink. One for war. They are having one hand in prosperity, one hand in intercession. One hand in wealth, one hand in, in prophecy. One hand in physical things, one hand in spiritual things. They are not one-sided Christians. They are not only prosperous, but they are anointed. They, they are not only in, in riches, but they are prayerful. They are able to hold both positions, the physical and the spiritual together. This is the army I'm looking for. If you find them, Go with them. And the 
Bible says there were only 300. From 32,000, God took them to 300. If you check it with meds, it's less than 1%. I am afraid this is, can be prophetic. That most of you, the people who are around you, only 1% of them are necessary for where God wants to take you to where you want to go. The 99% around you, some of them are afraid to even go with you. They are discouraging you. Some of them, they want to go with you, but so that they can receive the glory. And God would say... Get rid of the 99, move in with the 1%. With this one, I will do the work. They are able to put one hand in the water and one hand on the weapon. God said in, in the book of Exodus chapter 12, and talks about the Passover. He said, as you eat, let one hand be on the weapon. God is looking for such people. God is not looking for Christians who are educated, but not spiritual. Prosperous, but not spiritual. Who are rich but not spiritual famous but not spiritual he's still not looking for people who are prayerful but not prosperous he's still not looking for people who are fasting praying but anything physical they're not interested he says i want people who you look at the money they are there you look at the anointing they are there you look at the breakthroughs in life they are there you look at the spiritual life they are there they know how to balance the two lives that's an army God is looking for. They can put one hand in the feast of the Passover, but one hand on the weapon. They can be educated. They can be rich. They can be prosperous. They can be all balanced in the world. But check their spirituality. They are prayerful. They are prophetic. They are strong in God. They can do warfare. They don't mess. The devil never mess with them. They are strong in God. Yet in the world, they are still doing well. God said, this is the end time people that are, will bring the Passover over the land. He said, look at them. Let them eat the Passover this way. And he said, every family must do its own Passover. Because the victory of Passover is personal. Moses could have done it as a nation. But he said, every family must do it for itself. He could have done the Passover and said all Israelites gather in one place and he does the Passover. But no, 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 no. He said every family must do its own Passover because the battle of the Passover is a personal battle. The battle of the Passover is not conquered by the pastor alone. It takes you to encounter it yourself. It will need you to fight that battle for your family. Every family must be ready for the Passover. And, most, and they understood that, that this is the type of the Passover we need. And God spoke to Moses and said, this is how they will have the Passover. They must be ready for the Passover. And when they were ready for the Passover, now keep this in mind. These people are ready for the Passover. They are ready for the Passover. But look at the important things that I want to show you. Before the Passover... Nine times they thought that they are free. If you read your Bible, you discover nine times they left Egypt, took things, and they were singing on the streets, We are free. Why? Because the plaque of the blood came upon Egypt. And Egyptians said, No, 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 we're struggling from the blood. Let the Israelites go. And the Israelites would go. As they are busy going, Pharaoh would send the soldiers. Bring them back. They thought they were free. And they would come back. As they are relaxing, a plaque of darkness will come. And the Egyptians would say, let them go. As they are busy going, plaque would say, Pharaoh would say, ah, bring them back. Bring them back. They would come back. Then the frogs would come. Then Pharaoh would say, ah, let them go. As they are going, Pharaoh would say, bring them back. Now imagine... Let's be practical. You are the pastor of the Israelites. Your name is Moses. You stood there and you said, I bring your freedom in the name of Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. And then the frogs come and then you're free. And all of them say, our pastor is anointed. Now we are free. As they are walking, Pharaoh comes. Says, come back. When they come back, the next time you come and say, I'm bringing freedom. They say, Moses. Moses, don't forget, we have already gone out nine times. You've been prophesying our freedom and our deliverance nine times. But we kept coming back. 
Now, I want you to look at this practically. How many of you in here have been delivered from something? You even testified it and spoke about it. Few months down the line, the thing you thought you conquered came back. How many people have been free from a sickness? And a few months after that, the sickness came back. How many people have been free from a bondage of finance? And when you thought you've conquered it, it came back. How many people have been free from spiritual spouses? When you thought you've conquered it, it came back. You were like the Israelites who conquered when the plague of rocks came and Pharaoh said go. And as you are testifying, singing, talking to people, after some time, the Pharaoh came back. said, ah, 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 come back, come back, come back. And then those dreams are coming back again. Those battles are coming back again. The struggles you have gone through are coming back again. And you're wondering, God, what type of deliverance is this? That when I thought I am over, these things come back again. Why can't I get a total breakthrough that completes everything and these things never come back? Most of us have experienced what the Israelites experienced. To have a breakthrough but come back. The Israelites nine times they celebrated. Nine times they celebrated. But still after the celebration, they had to come back because Pharaoh said, bring them back. They are not yet delivered. They thought they are free. Bring them back. And they would come back to Egypt and work again. And they worked as slaves for years. They worked as slaves for years. And they would be released. After a certain time, they would have to come back. And they were wondering, why can't we get a total freedom? Now remember, the Lord says to the Israelites in Exodus 12, he says, now it is the Passover. He says, you have gone through temporary releases before. But this time, tell the Israelites that as they eat this, they must eat it ready to go. And he says to them, don't tell them only to be ready to go. Tell them to gather their children and everything. Because the Passover is not a freedom for an individual. It's a freedom for the family. He said, bring, let them bring their children. He said, not only that, tell them to bring all their possessions. Remember, all the nine deliverances they had, they were leaving their materials. Sometimes they left their children. Sometimes they left their material and go. But then they would come back. He said to them, this time, let them have all their materials with them. This time, let them have all their children with them. When God sets you free through the Passover, he delivers your children also. I want you to know today, as the Lord introduces you to the grace of the Passover, that child who is a drunkard is getting delivered also. That child bound by the devil is getting delivered also. When God brings a Passover deliverance, it comes even to your children. It doesn't come to you only. It fulfills the scripture that says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Can, can you shout it? As for me and my house, we will serve them. Can we say it again? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. When the Passover comes, it fulfills the scripture. You and your house shall serve the Lord. So God said to them, let the family be ready. But not only that. He said, let your materials be ready. Everything. And as if they had everything. He said, no, don't end there. Go to the Egyptians, ask them to give you some of their materials. That you don't only go with your things, but go also with their things. So when God brings you to a deliverance of the Passover, not only does he restore what the enemy took from you, he also gives you the possessions of the others. 
He brings the possession of the others into your life. He said, let them bring things to you. And then when they were ready, he said, after you eat the lamp, you put the cross, I will pass over. The angel of death will come. And wherever it doesn't see the blood, the firstborns will die. And when that happens, you will be released. Now remember, the firstborns did not die first and they packed after. They packed first. Prepared everything when there was no sign of their deliverance. So faith had to be applied. They had to put everything there and say we are ready to go. And when they were ready to go, the last thing they had to do was the, was the Passover meal. After eating the Passover meal, then the angel of death came entered into every house which did not have the blood on the door and killed the firstborns and after killing the firstborns then they said ah, ah the israelites have to go now let me ask you a question why when all the nine plaques happened the egyptians still had the power to bring them back but on the Tenth plaque, which was the death of the firstborn, they did not have power to bring them back. What was different between the nine plaques and the tenth one? Let me explain something. All the nine plaques, all of them, nine of them, represented the nine gods of the Egyptians. Because the Egyptians worshipped the blood. That was part of their gods. They worshipped the blood. They had a god that they worshipped. The god of blood. The Egyptians worshipped flies, lice that bite people. They had a god that they worshipped like it. The Egyptians worshipped frogs. The Egyptians worshipped dust on the ground. Before they would plant anything, they would take the soil to their house and kneel down and worship the soil and said, we worship you god of the soil that our plantation must grow. They worship the soil. The Egyptians worshipped rain as part of their God. So all the nine plagues that came upon them were the nine gods that they worshipped. And God was delivering Israel from all the nine gods. Why? Because they've stayed in Egypt for a long time. That they've become like the Egyptians and had even adapted to the gods of the Egyptians. That some of the Israelites were already worshipping the gods of the Egyptians. So God had to destroy the nine gods before he can set them free. He had to destroy the nine gods before he could set them free. So he destroyed each god. But every time he destroyed the god, they came back because there was something that was making it possible to come back. All the nine gods died, but there was one thing bringing them back all the time. But when God killed the firstborns, Egypt could do nothing. Why? Because in the Egypt culture, the firstborn is the priest of the family. So if you have a family, your firstborn is the priest. You can't go to the altar to worship. It is the firstborn who goes to the altar to speak to the gods. The family can't go. The firstborn has to go and evoke the altars, evoke the spirit, evoke the ancestors as the family is kneeling down. And whatever the spirits say, it is the firstborn who comes and tells the family what the spirits are saying. So the firstborn was the priest of the altar in the family. So every time the Israelites destroyed one God, one God, one God, every time the gods died, the priest was still alive to go back to the altar and revoke the covenants. So every time, whatever they did, Israel, and they were celebrating, the priest would go back to the altar and revoke the covenants and Egypt would get power again. Every time they thought they had won, the priest would go, which is the firstborn, speak to the altar, and their powers would get back again. And Egypt would rise up and say, let them come back, because our priest has spoken. Every time they thought they had won, the priest would go there, do a sacrifice, sprinkle blood, talk there, and speak to the powers, and say, give us power to bring back our slaves and our servants. 
So every time you have found breakthrough and you are moving, there is a priest in your family who goes to the family altar and talks on the altar and says, that man who was our slave is now free. We want to bind him again. And the altar talks to the priest and says, release the powers to bring him back. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Every time your freedom comes, your freedom cannot be permanent because the priest in the family who revokes the powers is alive. Because the priest in the family who evokes the powers is still powerful. So every time you get your breakthrough, you get a job and finances are going well, the priest can see that your finances have gone well. And the priest goes back to the altar of the family. Talks to the ancestors and the powers. And says that person is free. The powers say bind him again. Throw a chain. Pull him back to financial bondage. Make him our slave again. And they would throw this and bring you back. And you are saying why? I had financial breakthrough for six months. What happened? The priest is still alive to evoke the altar. And speak to the altar on your behalf. That's why your deliverance is temporary. Because you are conquering the spirits. You are not conquering the priest. You are conquering the covenants. That were spoken about your life. But the priest is alive to revive them again. The priest is alive to revive the altar. He's able to call and revive all the things because he's alive. The Israelites could not get a permanent breakthrough. It was temporary and they would celebrate. They would carry trumpets and move on the street and thank, thank the Lord for deliverance. But they couldn't go very far. Because as they are doing that, the families would gather their firstborns and say, Hey, we don't have a slave anymore. Our slaves are gone. Talk to our gods. And the firstborns will kneel down, throw sacrifices, evoke the altars, and bring them back. So the God said, now I will kill the priests that connect the families to the altars. So when the Israelites leave, there is nobody to go and evoke the altar on behalf of the Egyptians. When I kill the firstborns, the altar cannot rise up. Enchantments can happen. Altars can stand. Nothing will happen. Everything broken will be broken for good. Because the priest is killed. So God did the last thing. He knew. He said this one that I'm doing now. Is going to set you free. Because the man who connects the altar. To the people is dead. The people will not be able to revive what they've done before. I'm raising this into your life right now. That some of you, you have been praying, you have been fasting. You have found momentary break breakthroughs. Short time elevation. Short time healings. Short time prosperity. And after some time, the altar is revived. And the things you thought you had conquered, now have turned again. Things you thought you have won, now you have lost them again. Breakthroughs you thought you have are no longer there anymore. And you are wondering, what is going on? The Lord sent me today to tell you, in this day, God is going to anoint you to confront the priest of your family. God is going to anoint you to engage war with the priest of your family. And this war, you have to do it personally for your family. God will reveal the priest of your family. You will wage war against the priest. And if the priest can fall, no altar can be revived. If the priest can fall, no evil can be revived. Whatever breakthrough you find, it will be permanent. Because there is no person to revive the altar. There is no person to revive the altar. The altar will collapse. The altars have been praying. Killing through prayer. Killing through fasting and warfare. They are always rising back. Why? The priest is alive. The priest revives the altars. I am afraid to say. Some of you when you engage into fighting the altars. That the priest will give up. The priest will let go. But some priest will die. I am saying it again. I am afraid to tell you. 
that as you invoke the altar, fight the priest, some priest will give up. Some priests will let go. Some priests will leave your family alone. But some stubborn priests, nothing will make them give up. It will take the smiting of Jehovah from the heavens to remove them from the face of the earth so that your family can be free. There are some priests that have made a covenant with their life for your freedom. They've made a covenant that you will never be free unless I die. And today I tell you, if you invoke the altar and the priest is refusing, the altar of the Lord will rise up and remove any man standing before you. In the name of Jesus, I speak to every priest and the altar and the one who asked for it. Let the earth open and swallow them in the name of Jesus. I leave the authority of God upon your life that the priest and any body connecting you to the altar will see the smiting of the let the sword of God arise on your behalf let God arise and his enemies be scattered by the power of the Lord God your freedom is here I speak to your family right now it doesn't matter who it is is an aunt is an uncle is a cousin is a grandfather whoever it is if he's standing in the way for your breakthrough I say any man standing in the way for your breakthrough by the authority of God vested upon my life let the shot of God arise smite God arise oh Jehovah on behalf of your children let the Lord arise and bring victory over the people of God. Every priest standing in your way. Right now by the authority of God. As I speak right now. Some of you as I'm talking. You are seeing faces. You see faces of people. As I'm talking right now. Some of you you see a face. You see a face of a person. Somebody's face is appearing before you. Somebody's face is appearing. Be in the name of Jesus. I raise up an altar of the Lord. I stand on the altar of rock of salvation and say every altar of the kingdom of darkness we lift up your children oh God and let the priest be disempowered in Jesus name. you are seeing a face you are seeing a face you are seeing a face as I speak you are seeing a face the name of a person is popping in your mind the somebody you are seeing this is the person responsible for my family this is the person in my family this is the person in my relatives hindering us to get to where we are going this is the priest of the altar of our family this day i speak in the name of jesus every evil priest hear my voice the church is rising and the church is fighting to bring you down you and your powers I talk to every priest and his powers, every priest and his wizards, every priest and his witches, every priest as in enchanters, every priest and his neighbors, and everybody helping him to fulfill the mandate by the authority of God. The church arises. The battle is the Lord's. God is rising on your behalf. You are no longer dealing with spirits. You are no longer dealing with problems. This is the day to confront the priest. This is the day to disempower the priest. The Bible says you shall not enter a strong man's house before you first bind the strong man. Today we bind the strong man in the name of Jesus. The priest ruling over your family. We bind him in Jesus name. Every priest enchanting over your children, every priest enchanting over your finances, every priest enchanting over your health, in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the Lord, we bind you, priest. This is not something your pastor will do for you, but this is something I release the anointing upon your life. For you to go and do it for your family. This is something at least the anointing upon your life. Right now by the authority of the Lord. Stand up right where you are. By the authority of the Lord. We release the anointing upon your life. We release the anointing upon your life. To take war into the battlefield. We release the anointing upon your life. That you confront. You confront the priest. And win the battle against the priest. In the name of Jesus. There's an anointing right now that is released upon everyone, every woman, every man, every child. 
every brother, every sister, there's an anointing right now to release you to confront the priest of your family. Confront that priest. Confront that priest. Confront the priest of your family. Let your family be free. Engage the priest. Whoever refuses to repent, whoever refuses to change, whoever refuses to let go, let the sword of God smite them. This is time for your freedom. Time for your breakthrough. It is the Passover. It is the Passover. It's not one of the feasts. It is the Passover. You will pass over every challenge. You will pass over everything they've put inside of you in the name of Jesus. Everything in you that you got through food, you got through a drink, you got through blankets in the name of Jesus. The hand of God is entering your body and removing it in the name of Jesus. Vomit it by the power of the Lord. Let it lose its power in Jesus name. Oh, I see some people running out. If you're running out, run fast. Let God deliver you. See some people running out. I release the hand of God inside your body. That whatever inserted in your body, whatever the enemy put in your body, by the authority of God, you are free. By the authority of God, you are free. It's coming out of your system. In the name of Jesus, every joint and ligament, it's getting empowered to set you free from the bondage of the priest. You priest, today we have declared the end of your journey, the end of your work, the end of your work in the name of Jesus. If you are a priest in the village, hear my voice. This is the last day you trouble the people of God. If you are a priest in the house, hear today is the last day you trouble the people of God. If you are a priest in the graves, I release the power of God to set the people of God free. <coughs> the hand of God is moving upon your life the anointing is upon you fear not tonight fear not confront the altars confront the priest fight a battle you will never lose it we are in the Passover we just took a Passover meal the anointing of God is upon your life confront the priest let the family win the battle it's not for you it's for you and your family your children and your grandchildren and your great grandchildren will see the hand of the lord you fight a battle and they shall win every priest in your family every priest in your family there is a girl right now as i'm speaking as i'm speaking there's a girl right now you hear a voice you hear you are clear clear Clear. this is your aunt's voice this is your aunt's voice you are hearing the aunt is saying to you get out get out get out get out of the church get out as i'm talking right now you there is a girl you know the person that has been a priest it's my aunt you're hearing your aunt's voice. i'm not going to ask you to come forward but i want you to see the pastor after the church you are hearing your aunt saying get out get out today aunt i come against you in the authority of jehovah I bind your works. I pull down your altar and liberate this family in the name of Jesus. It is the Passover. It is the Passover. It is the Passover. Everything that came as a flood shall pass over. Everything that came to destroy you shall pass over. Everything shall pass over. Tell this girl, tell her on her ears, she will not die tell her on the ears you will not die you will not die you will not die you will not die tell your aunt she has lost the battle she will you will not die you will not die victory 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 is our portion everyone that the enemy has planned your premature death we abort the plan in the name of Jesus. You will live and declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. With long life will the Lord satisfy you. The altars will bow to the name of Jesus. The altars will bow 
because the priest is arrested everybody lift up your voice talk to god right now talk to god that the priest of your family is arrested talk to god that the priest of your family is arrested and god is giving you victory victory is yours everybody just talk to god talk to god talk to god talk to god right where you are nobody should be quiet talk to god this is a time of everybody engage everybody engage it's time for victory 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 We stand, we proclaim victory. We proclaim victory. Victory. Everybody right where you are. Shakakatabo shikatayaba. Victory. Shakatabo shikatababa. Shakatayabo. Victory. Everybody declare victory. You have anointing right now. Anointing over your life. Anointing over your life. You will bring down the priest. 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 In the name of Jesus. You will bring down the priest. Everybody continue praying. Oh God. The priest is defeated. In the name of Jesus.